Good afternoon, church. My name is Lauren Crockton, and this is my sister, Marnier Crockton. And we will be doing the scripture. We will be reading the scripture today. So today's scripture is found on Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. When you have it, please stand and say amen. On your pew Bibles, it's found on page 87. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> when we all have it, please say amen. amen. All right. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she gave a papyrus basket. She got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the bank, the basket among the reeds and sent her female slaves to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. The next scripture is found on Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 23. When you have it, please say amen. amen. By faith... Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born. Because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Thank you. <laughs> Amen.
Thank you, Lord. Praise Let us prepare for worship and preaching this morning. Amen. Amen. Children, this song said, I love the Lord. This is my testimony. I love the Lord. You don't know what he has done for me. He's been good to me. He's given me victories. He's heard my cries and he has saved my soul. You don't know what God has done for me. And I can say this morning that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? I will lift mine eyes into the hills from which cometh my help this morning, because I know that my help cometh from the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and his mercies endure forever. I have been young, but now I am old, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg bread. So when I think about the goodness of the Lord and what he has done for me, my soul cries out. I thank you, God, this morning for saving me. Is that your testimony this morning? Ah, God is good. Hallelujah. Give me some praise this morning. For he is good. And if you're a mother, you have been through some things this morning. So we just want to come just to say, God, thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Father God, this morning, we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit through this message will address every limitation, remove any blocks, Remove every hindrance on this Mother's Day. God, we need to hear a word from you. So God, allow your word to be manifested with grace. God, we believe that you're going to do a great work in us and through us and for us this day. Because God, when we leave this place, God, we know that we have been in your presence. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the people of the Lord say amen. amen. To our Pastor Gerald, I once again thank you for the opportunity to stand behind this sacred altar to bring forth the word of life. I do want to thank both of my granddaughters, Lauren, 14, ninth grade, and um, my Nia, Will, 19, uh, going into her junior year at Hampton, down there with Angelica. And Angelica, thank you for riding her around because she doesn't have a car. You do, thank you. I thank, I thank God for them for reading the scripture, and they are so eager to serve the Lord wherever he can. I thank God for their lives. And I thank Sister St. Martin for being a mother figure to so many children as the director of the children choir. You all know my, I have a niece that is uh, in her 40s now. She was the children director over at St. Paul when she was in the little choir. Thank you. Thank you, God, for her life that she is pouring into them the gift of music and song. And she is training them up to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So, Miss St. Martin, we thank you on this Mother's Day. Those children can sing, and not only, they sing with a joy, they know their parts. They know all different parts and sing, so thank you again. So, to the rest of you, I just want to say happy, happy, happy Mother's Day. I know that this day, uh, can be unpleasant, as you've heard in the prayer this morning, and you have already heard from the First Lady, that it can be unpleasant and it can be difficult for some women. Even myself, as I think about my mother, Annie Mae. My mother lived in a time where there was all kind of rules for her. That's what our message is going to be about today. I did it. I do it again. 
I'll break some rules. I'll do what I have to do to save my babies. That's, that's, that's basically what we're talking about. And if we don't have children, I'm gonna do something for somebody's child so that they can walk into the divine purpose that God has called them to walk into. But when I think of my mother, she lived in a time where she was bombarded with all kind of rules and protocols. My mother always wanted to be a deaconess. You deaconess? But you know why she couldn't be? Because there was a rule that said, unless your husband was a deacon, you couldn't be a deaconess. So my mother never was able because of a rule. When I think of my mother, there was all kind of rules and, and, and protocols in place. My mother had to get permission from my father to do most things. That's just how it was. And, and one of the things, we used to go downtown a lot, and I was a little defiant little thing, I tell you I was. I, I, I would run up there to that library in that little town, and I would want to go in there because I love books. And my mother said, baby, you know you can't go in there? Rules that kept this little black girl from doing things. But I tell you, I want to thank God for my mother, that even she knew how hard it was, she kept on praying. Rules where my mother was called Annie Mae by some little white children that was six and seven years old. But we were called, you don't call folks by their first name. What you do is you call them Mr. and Mrs. Rules. I kept my, kept my folks. Rules when I would pass by the churches in my little town. In those churches, I said, Mom, why are those churches so big and beautiful? Can we go in there? No, baby, you can't go in there. Rules. Those are white folks' churches. You can't go in there. Somebody in here gonna have to learn as women and as mothers. We're gonna have to learn to defy some rules sometimes. We're gonna have to break some rules sometimes. Oh, 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 for Christ's sake. So I thank God this morning for my mother. But even as I'm thanking God for my mother who was bound by so many rules, my mother wanted to work in that little um, shirt factory that they brought to my little hometown, Clayton, Alabama, the hometown of the biggest surrogates that was around George Wallace. He lived in that little town. And because she was black, because she was a woman, because in that little town they wanted black women to work as domestic servants, they blocked a rule that blocked the black women in that town from working in that shirt factory. Rules! So I'm thanking God this morning that there is a God that will defy every rule that man has made for his glory. Woo. Our God and his honor. So I come to say to some women this morning, don't worry about what limitations that man has imposed upon you. But I come to declare to you today that God has a plan and a purpose and a destiny for all of us my mother might not have lived to see some of the rules that have now come forth for her child, me. But I thank God, I thank God today that there was other women, there were other men out there fighting to break these rules so that now I can have five or six libraries in my house. <laughs> I got books galore all over the place. As a matter of fact, my son said, Ma, you got to get rid of some of these books. Don't you mess with my books. You don't know what we've had to come through just to, just to read. Ah, but I want to let you know, whatever circumstances you are, women and mothers, to stay. I don't care if you have been hurt from the past, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're educated, uneducated, rich, poor, regardless of your ethnicity, God can get the glory. God can get the honor out of your life. As women and mothers, we have been created. I'm not leaving you out, men, but this is Mother's Day. We have been created 
to walk in kingdom authority with power from on high. Yeah. Women don't give you power away. <laughs> to be change agents, to fulfill kingdom purpose, and to help others along the way. It won't matter what roadblocks are put in our way. God will use those roadblocks as a door detour straight to his will. Now I want y'all to listen to this because it has to do with the message today. There are some dark powers out there legislating malicious laws and enforcing evil rules at the expense of our children right now. There are evil powers out there that literally hate our children, hate us, and they want our posterity, our children, wiped out from the face of this earth. Remember Haman and the Esther story? And the Pharaoh story that you just heard my grandchildren read about. You know, when you think about wanting to wipe out our children in America, they are mass killings every day, evil in schools every year. As a matter of fact, it just happened this week or last week. Uh, there are evil folks and evil rules, even while we are sitting in here in church, that are sex trafficking our babies, our boys, and our girls for prop. Yes, they are. There are some unspoken rules that people are out there doing. Uh, there are evil out there. Uh, there's evil and poverty out there that are keeping many of our children trapped in it. I'm going to put a pause right there. Do you all know that right here in this great city that the medium income for white Americans, and this is a report, about 200 medium income, $250,000 a year. But when you add all of us in this city, do you know the medium income for us is only $8? Eight dollars? Eight dollars? Poverty. Do you know that in this great city, I'm talking about poverty now, in this great city, by the year 2022, do you know that you will have to be a college grad in order to fill 41% of the jobs that will be here? Did you know that? And then if our children are not in college and these jobs are coming into this city, what is going to happen to my, our children? There's evil in this land. Do you know that in this city, that in this city, when we are talking about houses in this city, do you know that the medium income in this city can start at $2,500 a month? Do you know in this church, I'm sure I don't know of anybody, trying to get an apartment in this city is tough. So if our children are living in a zip code that they cannot go into substandard schools, that means with substandard schools they cannot get sometimes in the college that they need to get into, substandard that zip code, then if they cannot get into college, that means that they don't have the skills even to get high paying job. And certain zip codes, if you don't have the skills to get in the high paying job, then you're in low paying job. Low paying jobs mean you can't buy a house. Low paying jobs still say that you're trapped in poverty. Rule! unspoken rules that are doing all kind of evil in this land. Ah, but I come to tell you that God is able. There are evil powers out there that will kill, destroy things in infancy, whether they are our children or whether they literally our children are ruled. Remember Herod after baby Jesus? So in today's message, we find five women used by God who defied the Pharaoh rule. Why? Because evil was at work. Women of God, when evil is at work, you know what we do. We will roll up our sleeves and we will do what is necessary to save our children from hell and destruction. Don't tell me you won't. 
Hallelujah. And why did he make this rule? The Egyptians had become fearful of the Hebrew slaves. Why? Because God had blessed them. And killing off the male children was Pharaoh's plan for population control and many more things. By using his tactics, it was nothing more than just murder and genocide. We see it happening again and again and again all over this world. But these five women in this Exodus story, some preacher would say five women. Ah, in chapters one and two, they put themselves in danger and maybe death to protect Moses and other babies from the raft of the decree. Those were some bad sisters, ah, mothers. Look at, let's look at woman number one, Josephette, who was the mother of Joseph. Ah, this mother loved her children because you know other children was Miriam and Aaron and she would do anything to protect their safety and well-being, including putting herself in danger. Now let me read the scripture again for you that Lauren has read. So the man from the family of a Levi married a Levite woman. The woman became pregnant and had a son. She saw that there was something special about him and hid him. Let me start right there. She saw that there was something special about him. You all know that special in this text mean that God had favor upon his life, meaning that God had a purpose for his life, so she hid him. Families, mothers, fathers, sometimes we're just going to have to hide our children, not literally, but we're just going to have to pray for them so that we can protect them from the evils and the vials of this world. She hid him for three months. There some time you're going to have to hide our children for a lifetime. When she couldn't hide him any longer, she got a little basket boat made of papyrus, waterproofed it with tar and pitch, and placed the child in it. Then she set it afloat in the reed at the edge of the Nile. But that's not all what she did. She prayed. She put her trust in God. Now, I don't know what she said, but she probably said, we cannot say, talking about she and her husband, I have a little boy from the forces of death. Ah, but working in concert with God, God can. At that time, she didn't know that there was salvation through the water. Because in the Nile, that Nile could be dangerous. There was crocodiles, there was all kind of things in that water. But let me tell you about our God. Our God can do mighty things in water and bring us through. If you don't believe me, there is salvation in the water and through the water. In the Exodus story it says, Israel's salvation came through water by the way of the Red Sea. Ah, oh, God brought them through so that they could get on the other side. Ah, oh, Joshua and the people's salvation came through the Jordan River when they had to walk through the water on the other side. God saved Noah and an ark on water from the flood because water has something about it that God used it for something. God saved Jonah through water by the way of the Mediterranean Sea to do his will, something about the salvation of water. John the Baptist saw salvation through water as people came to him to be baptized in the repentance of sin and for their forgiveness. We are saved by the resurrection of Jesus from the death and the meaning of salvation. We are being buried in water and rise up again. So just maybe if she had had those stories, she would have known that in the water God can save you. If you don't believe me, ask Peter. Peter was walking on the water. Ah, but when he looked down from the water, oh God, and he began to fail, Jesus put his hands out and Jesus saved him. Something about that water. Hallelujah, Jesus. Then there was women, two and three. The Hebrew midwives. Shafira and Pua, who feared God more than they feared Pharaoh, and they defied his rule. Plus, they respected, I believe, the sanctity of life. 
And then it reads, it has been read today, it's of the king of Egypt. That's in chapter one of Exodus. It's of the king of Egypt had a talk with two Hebrew midwives. One was named Shifra and the other poor. And he said, this is what he said. Remember those evil rules and edicts and laws? He said, when you deliver the Hebrew women, the children, I want you to look at the sex of the child. He said, if it is a boy, kill him. If it's a girl, you can let her live. But the midwives had far too much respect for God and didn't do what the king of Egypt ordered. They let the baby boys live. Then the king of Egypt called the midwives in and he said to them, well, why didn't you obey my order? You let those babies live? Now, I'm not saying it was a little white lie here because it could have happened, but this is what they said. The midwives answered Pharaoh. They said the Hebrew women aren't like the Egyptian women. They are vigorous. Before we can get there, they have already had their babies. God was pleased with the midwives. The people continued to increase. They continued to be very strong. And let me tell you, because they defied those rules, God honored them. And then you know what God did also? Sometimes when you defy rules, he gave them families of their own. Because in that time, most midwives was barren. They could not have children. But God touched their womb. And then babies came forth from them. Pharaoh wasn't happy about this. So you know what he did? Uh, you remember talking about those evil rules and evil powers? He said, put out another general order. He said, every boy that is born, drown him in the Nile. But every girl, you can let them live. I'm talking about evil and evil at work. Destroying the boys, destroying the men. Ah, in this world, our babies and our brown and our black boys is still happening and it's still going on. Women of God, we want to defy some rules. Uh, I don't know what God is calling us to do, but we're going to have to do something. And then that was the woman number four, Miriam, his sister. Moses' sister, she was a protector who kept watch over her baby brother and she looked out for him. And the, and the scripture said, the baby's oldest sister found herself a vantage point a little ways off and watched to see what was happened to him. Now let me put a pause there. If you are older siblings and you have some little brothers, little sisters, Look out for them. Protect them if you're older. You know the big bad wolves and the wolverines that are out there. School them. One of the things that I will say, I, I, I will, I'm going to say Reverend Bodrick there, that one of the things I noticed, I don't know if it was true, but one thing I noticed, wherever he is, his little brothers are right there. Thank God. If he's going to be at a White House dinner, his brother's going to be at a White House dinner. <laughs> if he's at the State House, Winston and Well, I'm going to be at the State House. <laughs> I know this because I look at Facebook. I, I, I tell you, that's just how God is. But then M Miriam, she was looking out for him. And when she saw that the princess was there, Pharaoh's daughter, and she had gotten her little brother, said, do you want me to go and get a nursing mother for the Hebrew women to take care of the baby for you? See what she did? Taking care of her little brother. And Pharaoh's daughter said, yes, go. The girl went and called the child's mother. Won't God just do it? Won't he orchestrate things? And then Pharaoh's daughter told her, take this baby, Pharaoh's talking about Moses' mother. She said, take this baby, nurse him for me. And then not only are you taking care of your own kids, she said, I'm gonna pay you for it. 
And then the woman took the child and she nursed him. But oh, while she was nursing him, we can begin to think what she was saying. Uh, she was pouring into him life. Uh, living water she was pouring into him because she knew that he was going to have to face a world that one day wouldn't be kind to him. That's what we have to do, mothers in here. And then there was woman number five, Pharaoh's daughter, who found him in the river and kept this baby knowing that he was a Hebrew and she defied her father's own rule. Somebody had said that somewhere along the line that she was sick and tired of the idol gods that they were worshiping. And somebody said along the way that she started secretly worshiping our true and living God. Pharaoh's daughter came down to the Nile to bathe and her maiden strolled on the bank and she saw the basket and she sent them to open it. And when she opened it, she saw this baby. The baby was crying and her heart went out to him. And then she said, this must be one of those little Hebrew babies. And after she got the baby, she held the baby, she took the baby, and then you heard the story with Miriam. Not only she did that, but as of age, she adopted the baby. She loved the baby. She named the baby. She called him Moses pulled out, saying, I pulled him out of the water. Hallelujah this morning. Oh, what a story. And that's a story. Five women looking after one child to make sure that he was going to walk into his destiny. When God is in the mix of our situation, whom should we fear? Do we have to worry? Because God told us our way that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Ah, we can count on God. And you know, when I think, I'm just thinking now, when I think about the women in that story and what they did and the rules that they defied uh, for this child, I and help them, I'm thinking about this church. There have been many women, like the five women in this Moses story, who allow God to use them to help in the fulfillment of our children and other folks' children. They wanted to make sure that those children within this church would reach the destiny and purpose for humanity. They are pulling and they pulled out children of dangerous waters of this world and then they kept a watchful eye on them. Do y'all remember Miss Clara Jenkins? Some of you do, some people are gone. But Miss Clara Jenkins, who never had children of her own, but devoted her life teaching our children the word of God and directing the children's choir for decades. I think she did it probably about 30 years. And we don't even know the sphere of influence that she had on their lives. Remember Miss Jenkins, she made every week they had to learn a Bible verse. And in that they better not come here with the same one. That was Miss Jenkins. Ah, uh, we, 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 we know her, we can still see her. And my friend Vera became her own little adopted daughter to Miss Jenkins. That's to Miss Jenkins. And then I think of uh, Sister Molly Dawson. And I call her because these are women who work long in ministry. I know Miss Dawson probably worked about 30 or 40 years, maybe longer than that, in the children's nursery ministry right downstairs and in the scouting program. She, and I know Sister, Sister Juanita Hope worked with her for years, she was helping them in reaching God's purpose in their lives. Now, when I think of the senior citizens here today, the seniors, the swingers that are here today in this church, most of them or some of them are in their 80s and 90s. They meet almost every Tuesday. And sometimes 
Now I put a pause there because I should be in there, but I'm not there yet. One day I will get there. <laughs> but they meet here every Tuesday. And sometimes in meeting, they have a lunch with our preschool children. They read to them. They have little conversations with them. And like Moses' mother, Joseph, had, our seniors are pouring into our children. Children who may not have or come from a Christian family, but they are pouring into them. They are talking to them about God, love the Lord with all your heart. They are saying that, yes, Jesus loves you. Pouring into them. But you know, not only them, we got some people out here in America today who are pouring. Now, one of the things that, that I will say right now, one of the things that I've learned to do is that I have to be social conscious. I have to learn to do that because sometimes our children are not being taught about their heritage in school. There are times when they just don't know who and who they are. So I want to tell them today, there's a woman and they know her by the name of Oprah Winfrey. She built and found the Leadership Academy and she did it in 2007 for girls in South Africa. And this is what she had to say. She said, I wanted to provide education and leadership opportunities for academic girls from uh, impoverished and economically disadvantaged background like the one that I came from because I knew that somewhere in there, I knew those girls would exhibit qualities for making a difference in the world. Let me say this. When God seat us in positions of power where we can affect change, we are mandated to do so. If God have you as a headmaster of a school, an attorney, a doctor, whatever, God expects a little bit more from you to do his will. He is expecting that. When I was in the school system and I had the power to hire, I look for those little black and brown young folks coming out of college who needed an opportunity to work in this Boston public school system. So when you're in power, be like Oprah. Act in the spirit that she is acting. You know, Oprah was a Pharaoh's daughter. She had compassion. She had love for other girls that was floating in the rivers of life. In her mandate, she used her power and influence just to pull them out. Hallelujah. Now I think of our first lady, Michelle Obama, a former first lady. Who did that floatist job her way, didn't she? Uh, Michelle was something else. Michelle was a protocol breaker. Michelle was so bad that when she went to England, you know, she didn't do any cursive. Uh, she just said, you know, I'm breaking this protocol here today. She grabbed the queen and she just gave the queen a little hug because that was power standing in front of power. Oh, I would say that Michelle knew, but wait a minute, I don't have to curse it to no one. My ancestors have already made a curse it for me. I can think that Michelle said it was your folks that had in, enslaved our folk. So I'm not going to stand here. I'm just going to come woman to woman. That We all have had some stuff in our lives. I'm just going to give you a hug. Ah, God is good. So I thank God for Michelle. Michelle, if she wanted to wear a dress with no sleeves, she did. Fied that rule. Uh, Michelle went and put a garden in back of the White House and said, we're going to have fresh food. Defied the rules and what they did. Oh, God, thank God for Michelle. And then this is what Michelle said. She said, when you have worked hard and you have done well, and you have walked through the doorways of opportunities, you do not slam it behind you. You need to reach back and give other folks, other children the same opportunity and help that you got. Hallelujah. 
But listen to one of the old timers, 1955, when Rosa Parks, the mother of the civil rights movement, she defied the Jim Crow laws of the South by refusing to relinquish her seat in the colored section of a city of a white man. Hallelujah. You know what she did? She said, I'm not going to get up and change and move me from this seat. Amen. One of the things that I will say, my voice is leaving me, so pray for me. One of the things that I will say today, that because of her act, pray for my voice, pray. Just pray. Because of those laws, one of the things that happened, that Michelle was able to sit and seek the power. Help me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pray for me right now. The devil don't want this message out. But the devil is a liar. God is a good God. God is a wonderful God. Help me, Jesus. Because of what Rosa Parks did, we can sit in seats of power unapologetic. Because of what she did, we can sit in seats that will give women the right to vote, unapologetic, bold, and I thank God for that. I thank God that you gave seats to the women, Ayanna Presley, a seat in the House of Representatives. When she defied the odds and then she unseated uh, Mike Conaponder, who held the seat for over 20 years. Elizabeth Warren, you had a seat in the House of Senate. They are using their voice and position to speak out on issues of injustice and disparities and is affecting negative decades that come. When I think of Dr. Martin Luther King and his wife Coretta, Scott King, they defied the Jim Crow laws in the South to endure and to make sure that our children will one day live in a nation where they won't be judged by the color of the skin. But I, I'm telling you that God is a good God. They wouldn't walk around to see that they, in this world, that they didn't see the things that God was going to do when they defied the rules so that we could sit down at the seat of the brotherhood. Uh, as children of God, there are just some things that we cannot do and that we cannot condone. You know, and I think about the rules. Should we support wicked kings and their evil decrees? Should we support extremist leaders and their divisive policy? Can we turn a blind eye, pretending not to see the bodies of black at the hands of some bad cops, and then allow them to hide behind the saying, I felt my life was behind and my life was threatened? or at the hands of the ground, laws which are nothing more than sanctioned death and murder of our children. When they were just saying, in this word that they were saying, uh, you know, stand your ground. I felt my life was, can we stand by and let these rules just be there and do nothing? Can we turn a blind eye when over three million of our children are affected by gun violence each year? and over 3,000 are killed by guns. When do we stop hiding behind the Second Amendment of the Constitution, the right to bear arms, while breaking the 15th Amendment, 
which give blacks the right to vote, but employing voters restriction. When do we stand up for these evils? When man rules are in direct contradiction to God's moral authority, we must address those rules of injustice. As children of God, we must speak up when other folks just shut up. We must stand up when other folks want to just sit down. We must get out and vote and urge others to do so when they want to stay home and not do a thing. We can't wait for change to come. We must be the change by using the ballot box to bring about change for our future. There are times when we may come to break some rules. We break some protocols and do the will of God and to do what he has called us to do. To carry out this purpose, God will guide us and God will protect us. As a society, we need rules, we need protocols, the worst form of evil. But we have to set protocols aside of doing things, and God is a God of order. Jesus did not come to do away with the laws, but he said he come to fulfill them. So let me say this day, God rules out Trump man's rules. God look, broke many rules, and he let the traditions that the religious leaders impose in this day. Not to be rebellious, but to demonstrate love and mercy. I believe that on this Mother's Day, that God is about to break some things for you on his behalf. I don't know what they are, but you know what they are. He will fight your battles, and he won't, you won't know that you have won. Until sometimes somebody will come to you and say, oh, what a victory you have. He will pull you out in a house that you didn't know. He will put you in a house that you didn't know that you were qualified for. God will speed up things for you, things which you shouldn't take years to accomplish for other people. You will accomplish them in a month or a week. God will defy medical reports. When doctors say that it's fatal, God will say that you are healed. Go forth and live. Hallelujah. Because he holds all power in earth in his hand. And you can break some rules. All judgment belongs to him. He has the final authority in every situation in your life. He makes the impossible to become the impossible. He will make the miraculous to become ordinary in your life. He will promise you and no one that you have promoted you in a job and no one can demote you. He will overturn evil powers and edicts and rules and verdicts and decrees on your behalf. He will thank you for my powers coming back. He will open the closed doors that have been locked for generations for you. God will create new things just to bring his will and his purpose in your life. Uh, one thing that I know about God is that God is a good God. He will defy every rule. to your purpose. Oh, to get you to your destiny. Thank y'all for praying for me. I feel, oh, I feel the presence of God flowing in me. I feel him moving in me. I thank the God for saving me. I thank God for watching over me. I thank God for breaking rules for me. I thank God this day. But most of all, I thank God when he broke rules for me. When he sent his son, Jesus. To die for me. Hung on the cross for me. Stepped out of heaven for all of us. Unrobed himself from his glorious garments. And he came down to be wrapped in swaddling clothes, breaking bondage for me. I thank God for when he was up there 
on the cross, he stayed and he wouldn't come down. Breaking rules, hallelujah, Jesus, for me. I thank God today that he went down in the grave and he stayed there all night Friday, that he stayed there all day Sunday, uh, Friday and Saturday, but he got up just for you and me, giving us the power as mothers and as women to know that you got power on how to break rules. I'm not talking about going out there being uh, disobedient and doing things just because. But I want you to go out there and do things that you're qualified to do. I want you to go out there and do things that God has enabled. Don't go out there not prepared. Because when God came down, he was prepared. So I'm gonna say to you today, my brothers and sisters, go out there and fight for my mother. Go out there and fight for your mother. Go out there and fight for your children. Cause there are even rules out there that wanna devour our children, that wanna kill our children. But God is calling us to do a new thing in him. Amen. Amen.